You probably know Lululemon as a store where a pair of spandex leggings can cost you upwards of $100, or as a brand that helps you look your best while you're getting healthy. But it's so much more than that. When it began back in 1998, Lululemon was designed as a place where like-minded yoga and fitness enthusiasts could come together, shop, and share in a community. Now, no one is questioning the incredible success of this $6 billion plus company, which seems to be growing every year. But what often gets forgotten when it comes to Lululemon is the stark contrast between the values they promote and what they themselves actually are. This is a company that's faced numerous scandals, including a high-profile murder, a founder who loves making offensive statements, and a culture that's often been described as cult-like. This may not sound like the Lululemon you know, but scratch the surface behind their slick, high-budget marketing and you'll discover a very disturbing truth. This is the real story of Lululemon. Let's start with the founder, because he's the one largely responsible for all the things you love and hate about Lululemon. Chip Wilson got the idea to create the company back in the late 1990s, at a time when yoga was still far from becoming a mainstream activity in North America. Chip had just sold his previous snowboarding apparel company for a million dollars and he was looking for a way to invest his money into a new venture. The idea for Lululemon came to him while taking his very first yoga class. Sitting in the yoga studio, surrounded by women in tight, sheer, athletic apparel, Chip saw an opportunity. He was convinced that he could design a pair of leggings that would make women's butts look better, and he was willing to bet that if he could pull it off, women would line up to purchase them. His improvements included repositioning the leg seams so that they'd accentuate the butt rather than the hips, and also introducing a piece of fabric that would prevent the pants from riding up in the crotch. Chip's ultimate belief was that by making leggings that made women's butts look better, quote, eventually men would tell women the pants look great without really understanding why. Comfortable, sleek, and made from sophisticated material, Chip decided he could could sell his new leggings for $98 a pair, and he was right. This was at a time where the big athletic brands like Nike or Adidas were using the shrink it and pink it approach to women's fashion. That's to say they were simply taking men's clothing, making it smaller and changing the colours. And that's where Lululemon was different. They were one of the few companies to really focus on designing clothes that made sense for women. And Chip was hyper focused on his target consumer. In fact, he had a very specific customer in mind. A 32 year old woman who travels the world, owns a condo and makes at least $100,000 a year. This target customer was so specific that he even gave her a name, Ocean. She was a wealthy, ambitious, quote, supergirl. And that's why he wasn't afraid to charge premium prices for the clothing that he was creating. But for all of Chip's novel ideas about women's clothing, he's been pretty tone deaf in other areas. And sure, you might argue that that's not really a surprise given this man invented an entire company because he wanted to improve how women's backsides looked. But all the same, his statements have had a huge impact on his company. Now, there have been a lot of comments made by Chip, some simply strange, others downright offensive. And while there's too many to go into all of them, a couple of choice incidents should give you an image of what the visionary behind Lululemon is really like. In 2005, at a conference aimed at promoting socially responsible business practices, Chip said this, quote, third world children should be allowed to work in factories because it provides much needed wages. Needless to say, that didn't go down too well. But instead of apologizing for the statement, Chip decided to try and get ahead of the criticism by turning the whole thing into a joke. He and some members of his staff dressed up as babies working at sewing machines in one of their factories and placed it as an ad in Yoga Journal, a popular publication for the yoga community. And then 
There was the mishandling of his pilling pants debacle in 2013 when Lululemon faced a problem with its leggings for being too sheer. They were forced to recall about 20% of their products. Chip made the situation a whole lot worse by blaming the problem not on his company's fabric but rather on the customers themselves. Some women's bodies just actually don't work for it. Chip then issued an apology video which managed to make the situation even worse. You see, instead of apologizing to his customers that he may have offended, he apologized to his own staff. I'm sad for the people of Lululemon who I care so much about that have really had to face the brunt of, of my actions. And he ended his apology with this plea. I ask you to prove that the culture that you have built cannot be chipped away. Thank you. So let's talk about that culture, because it's the culture that really turns all of Lululemon's messaging about health and wellness on its head. While it's true that the company places an emphasis on a healthy lifestyle and self-improvement, the way they carry out their mission has been compared to a cult. What makes it cult-like? As a former employee explained, you get constant feedback and coaching, which means that you're scrutinized from the moment you walk in the door till the moment you leave. If you're in a bad mood when you walk in, you have to do a clearing, which is this neo-spiritual way of making you say whatever is going on in your life and then someone coaches you on how to get over it. Add to that the quote toxic levels of positivity including the claims that staff were often reprimanded for not smiling enough added to which there's also claims Lululemon have discriminatory hiring practices and you begin to see how the whole culture appears to be totally different to the image they portray to the outside world. It's worth noting, however, that things don't seem to have improved even after Chip Wilson stepped down as the CEO in 2015. In 2018, another Lululemon CEO had to step down after being accused of dating an employee and giving her special treatment. More recently, in a report conducted by Insider in 2021, they noted that Lululemon, after speaking with over a dozen employees, still promoted what they call toxic levels of positivity. Now, while you can't draw a clear connection between Lululemon's workplace policies and the shocking murder that happened in one of their stores in 2013, it is also worth mentioning. This was a murder that shocked the chic upscale neighborhood that it took place in. The story was that two men, hooded and masked, had broken into the Lululemon store, assaulted the two female employees, killed one and left the other unconscious. The murdered woman had 331 distinct wounds on her and had had her skull bashed in a gruesome and disturbing crime that had all the gripping elements to make it a national news story. But what made the story even more frightening was when it eventually became clear that the story about the masked men was all a lie. It was in fact the unconscious Lululemon employee who had in fact killed her co-worker and then made up the story about the two masked intruders. And it all started because the killer had apparently wanted to steal a pair of leggings. Does this have anything to do with the supposed cult-like environment at Lululemon? It's impossible to say, but at least one former employee thinks that it may have. But it's interesting to note that as shocking as the story was, it apparently was hardly talked about by staff after it happened, particularly once it became clear that one of the employees had been the murderer. Somehow, despite all of the negative publicity that Lululemon has received over the years, it's done little to dampen its incredible growth. In 2020, Lululemon was able to double its e-commerce business, ending the year with 1.2 billion in cash with no debt. And the company is now looking to grow its customer base by expanding into menswear. Unsurprisingly, financial analysts see Lululemon's future as being very bright. With Mirror, the interactive at-home fitness program that Lululemon rolled out in 2020, they seem poised to expand far beyond just a female yoga-loving activewear brand. But then again, Lululemon has always been so much more than that.
whether you see it as an encouraging place for achieving your health and fitness goals or a clothing store that walks the fine line between business and cult, Lululemon is far more than its products. It's a lifestyle brand that tells you you can have everything you want if you refuse to be mediocre. Its mission is to elevate the world by unleashing the full potential within every one of us. Whether or not they've stayed true to that mission is up to you to decide.